right, ladies and gentlemen, it's up to you. Let Mr. Politician know how you feel. Let him know that you're not going to take no more. Stop paying taxes. Stop paying for corruption and injustice. It's up to you. Well, that's the pointedly populist message of loopholeforall.com. It's the activist and artistic project of our next guest, Paolo Cirio, is right now a fellow with the I-Beam Institute in New York City. Paolo, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. So what is it? Is it art or activism, this loopholeforall.com? Uh, well, it's a set of things. It's art for sure, because I am an artist and it's uh, hacking and it's activism and it's journalism probably too, investigative journalism. So let me see if I can get this straight. It's tax season. If I were a billionaire or even if I were just me, you're saying that no matter how much money I have, I can now buy a tax haven in Cayman Islands? Yes, the That's project right. promotes to democratize tax haven so that everyone can afford them by basically stealing the identities of real Cayman companies in this case, but I would love to expand this project to other offshore centers. So how does it work? I provide the basic things to uh, hijack a company. Uh, hijacking a company is really common actually in the business world, uh, but the basic thing that you can do is just invoice uh, through a company based in the Cayman Islands. So I provide the certificate of incorporation of a Cayman and company, um, a mailbox in the Cayman. So I will uh, basically forward all the envelope for your business uh, where you are in an anonymous way. So it works very well for little business and freelance people. So they actually the, the people that are really squeezed by tax today because now they can invoice through a Cayman company. So they go to your site and there are various different options, but they can, as you say, get everything they need to look as if they're operating from the Cayman Islands. Yeah, that is the point. And uh, these basically exploit the fact that the real owner of those companies are anonymous. So since uh, no one knows who is, who is the real owner, everybody can pretend to be them and uh, just uh, start to use that company there. And since it's legal to avoid taxes and having a company at the Cayman Island, everyone can do that. Well, you brought up the legal question. Um, first, how many people have taken uh, advantage of your offer? And then B, let's talk about how legal it is. The, having a company in the Cayman uh, is totally legal. That is the point. Uh, it probably is not legal at the Cayman stealing the identity of those companies. But here, you know, is another jurisdiction. So it's really pushing these uh, boundaries uh, in a different way. Many people actually bought these certificates. Uh, how many people they use it? I don't know. But many people wrote me and asked me how to use, uh, especially where this project became more popular, like in in, uh, South Europe, world, where also this issue is like more important right now. You call the civil disobedience and a provocation, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers would agree, but PayPal does not agree and oh. recently froze all of the money that you'd raised so far from these f for these certificates. Yeah, I think someone really took this seriously, although it's a piece of art for me and people, the other people that are engaged in this. So PayPal uh, say that I am engaging in legal activity and they froze all the uh, little money that I did by sending identity of Cayman Island uh, that basically they were JPEG of piece of paper where there is this certificate so um, it's really questionable if that is illegal or not and the other interesting reaction was from the Cayman Island so that um, became really um, covered by the mass media, mass media, the mainstream media, the Cayman Islands. A world-renowned computer hacker claims to have breached the Cayman Islands Registry of Companies website. Paolo Sirio says he's published details of more than 200,000 companies listed here in Cayman. But government insists there has been no breach and reassures businesses their information is safe. In a statement issued today, they, they say the hacking claim is fake and they've received a number of queries to government over the claim. Donnell Dixon, the registry's senior assistant registrar, adds the registry's website features robust security features that avert information theft. 
The statement says the so-called hacker had simply cut and pasted company names into a template to create bogus certificates. So the national TV had uh, to cover this project and they asked to the uh, uh, company register, register um, at the Cayman what was going on and they totally denied that uh, the website were ha was hacked uh, but actually it was because that information wasn't public. And um, interesting was also the, the, the reaction from the business in the Cayman Islands. So for example, a real estate agency um, wrote me and asked me, uh, well, okay, people can invoice through using my company, but what about withdrawing money from my bank account with that document? I don't know, maybe it's the only document uh, that verified the, the identity of a you know, mm. company because it's the um, only ID of a company since the owner is actually uh, anonymous. You mentioned the Cayman Islands media. Your project hasn't gotten a whole lot of attention so far, but neither, to be fair, have tax havens gotten very much media attention, really, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, and yet I saw a report by a former McKinsey Group a researcher who's estimated that something between 20 and 30 trillion dollars are right now parked in these um, no-tax havens. What kind of companies are we talking about that take advantage of this tax law? 80% of hedge funds are based in the Cayman Islands. This the means, yeah, this means, uh, uh, you know, your pensions, most of the pension of, you know, uh, uh, American citizen, uh, pub public money as private money. And no one knows who is behind these uh, kind of structure, financial structure. Basically, today, every single multinational in the world use uh, tax haven, I would say, and beside them, uh, all the major banks in the world. So not surprising, all the money is rooted through those tax haven because pretty easy loophole in a way, because you just can uh, pretend to be based in one of those little island and uh, saying, look, here there is uh, no tax. And so this is happening um, everywhere, and the uh, tax haven are quite a lot today, actually. And uh, it became bigger in the last, uh, I would say, 20 years. There are many more um, com competitors, I would say. So they compete against each other. So for example, city of London is this neighbor in the center of London. That is considered offshore center, for example, as well as Cayman. Uh, if you look at the website of the city of London, they promote like financial service mm -hmm. as like uh, a bank park in a way. So they compete and they say which are their uh, best feature. There has been a report recently that came out in the second week of April from uh, an international consortium of investigative journalists that revealed thousands of documents, I guess they received some leaks, um, documenting hundreds of people in 170 countries <coughs> who were all participating or benefiting from these tax havens. Uh, on the list were people like um, um, Diane, uh, Denise, I think, Rich, the former wife of Mark Rich, the U.S. Um, tax evader who was famously um, granted clemency by Bill Clinton in his last minutes in office, the daughter of Ferdinand Marcos, a former army general of Venezuela. Kind of juicy stuff. What did you make of the coverage? I mean, there are, of course, a lot of, like, uh, you know, um, kind of censorship because uh, the companies are involved and the companies sponsor the media, you know, and there is a lot of lobbying going on at the Congress right now because the government, a lot of, all the government want to fix this problem, but they are constantly under pressure from the company that they want. General Motors right now in these days is like really lobbying a lot about these issues, for example. Um, we need transparency, but uh, you know, in a way, it's not always in the media that Facebook or Amazon or Starbucks have a subsidiary in the Cayman, but it happened often. Um, so some people know uh, about that. Uh, so what we need is a change in legislation and that work le uh, globally, uh, legally. So, okay, we can um, acknowledge that these big companies have offshore subsidiary, but then we also need to do something else. The rich individual will always use these tricks, you know, for um, kind of corruption, internal corruption, political corruption, it will still happen. But I think now, today, we really need to tackle the big companies rather than single individual. Now, Barack Obama in 2008 in the election campaign talked about Cayman Islands activity as, I think he said, some of the 
biggest or worst banking scam in the world, something like that. Yes. Um, since coming into office, what's he done about it? There is quite a lot of um, political pressure to change the situation, but there are also uh, a lot of companies, uh, every company is involved in these uh, offshoring uh, structures. And uh, politica, polit politicians as well are involved, as this leak demonstrate. So the point is that to change it will take time, but things are changing. And someone even um, said that it's like apartheid. You know, it was really hard to get rid of that or making change in the legislation about that because everyone was involved back at the time. And today we are in the same situation. Um, you know, 80% of the age edge funds there, uh, every single uh, multinational using them so it would take quite a lot of time to you know make it different so in a way your loophole for all dot com project is a kind of break apartheid break economic apartheid gesture <laughs> um, how is it art well first of all there is quite a lot of irony. What I, will, wh what I really like about um, working with this type of information and especially about the power of information and challenging uh, this uh, power is uh, engaging people in that. So sometimes it, that it's this like as a performance where people you know, um, participate in uh, this um, idea that they create. And then it's all much about uh, visualization of uh, information, like uh, hidden information, materialization of an information. For example, in this case, they are paper um, uh, certificates. So you wouldn't think that it's much important because you always think, oh, there's all uh, digital virtual information but actually that certificate paper certificate has a value especially if you are a company at the Cayman Island because as again is the only document that they have so for me it's really interesting giving these uh, um, materializing this information and um, then uh, the artistic action to sign all the certificate under my name. So issuing this uh, new uh, type of reality in a way that I create. And obviously it's quite uh, absurd. So just like um, play with uh, you know, imagination and creativity quite a lot. What happens next? Since PayPal banned me <laughs> from selling through through their Luxembourg uh, uh, subsidiary, by the way, I am providing everything for free. So now everyone can actually have a um, Cayman mailbox for free, and it will help them to avoid taxes here. And uh, also, the certificates signed by me are um, are, are for free uh, for the next months. And um, probably this will generate something else, maybe also from the Cayman, because when there is quite a lot of people using <laughs> and uh, stealing the, the identity of these companies, you know, may create other uh, pressure against them. Are you worried? Um, no, I am not worried. Actually, part of this project is using the same machination of these um, companies. So I set up a company in the city of London that was really cheap to buy, actually. And that is like my shield uh, for, uh, you know, legal persecution. So if they want to, you know, uh, look forward me, uh, they have to just uh, talk to that company that is called Paolo Cirio LTD. And uh, so because of that, legally, I am not really worried. Personally, some friends of mine are worried for my <laughs> safety, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. It's still an art project. Paolo Cirio, thanks so much for joining us. You can get more information at loopholeforall.com. <laughs>